just I agree with you 100 percent Sprout your papa's got a job to do all your friends are going to a new home you're going with this nice grumpus right here I'll miss you something fierce but it's okay you can come see papa anytime <laughs> I was thinking that security man because I think those the green like goo on the ground is their shell or something. I think you're right. Oh, okay. They have to starve because universal lunch is socialism. That shit kills me. I was just telling Zach this story the other night, actually. Not this story, a story. Um, I kind of had forgotten about it. It was very... I was only... Tw I think I was 20. I don't even think I was 21 yet. Oh, my God. Hello? <gasps> gimme, gimme, gimme. Um, I think I was 20. I was really young. And my boyfriend at the time and I um, had a friend that was doing... It was like a program you do in college if you want to do Greenpeace. It's not Greenpeace. You need a degree to do Greenpeace, but it's like pre-Greenpeace. I can't remember what it's called. But he did one in Hartford, Connecticut called Hands on Hartford. And he... They basically, what they do is they set you up with, like, bare bones housing. You still have to pay for They give you a job that pays the minimum wage, whatever, and you go to school while you do this, and it gives you, like, life skills or something. I don't know. I forgot I had all the chocolate I need. Um, I need to scan one more bug snack. Fuck. Who did I miss? I bet I have to wait till nighttime. Wait, is there a bed? Um, And so he was staying in Connecticut, and I'd never seen Connecticut before. And so we asked if we could come visit. And he was like, yeah, totally come visit. And we did. And it was, I mean, hardcore, like, living in basically a shambles house. We, The two of us slept on a couch together. It was alarmingly violent and horrible. But besides the point, we, he was working at a food kitchen, which is where you just volunteer your time to go work. And you make food or serve food or clean up dishes or whatever to the homeless community who shows up and wants a meal. And... I didn't realize until I went to go visit him that I had a weird, unsubstantiated fear of homeless people. And honestly, I, I've, I've like journaled about it and spiritually searched my brain, like why did that, where did that come from? And I don't think, I don't think it was really fear. Hold on. It was lack of exposure because up until that point, I had mostly spent the vast majority of my like you know, I'm an adult, my ever years in Eastern Washington where I never saw a homeless person, never seen one. My town is too small. The homeless people do not busk a town less, uh, less than 1500 people population, you know? And so all I had was like the homeless people of like movies and stuff to base my opinions on. And I kind of told my friend that I was like, I didn't tell him all that background, but I was like, I'm kind of scared of homeless people. And if you don't know, Hartford, Connecticut is a very bizarre city. Um, Connecticut at the time that I was there, I don't know if this fact is true anymore, but it's, got, it's still a pretty extreme fact that definitely the point I'm telling you will be relevant to this day, I'm sure. Um, it was at that time the most rich state in the United States of America. And Hartford itself, the city, was the most poor city in, a, in the entirety of the United States of America. And it's because Hartford, Connecticut is where Heartland Insurance is based, the huge ass company that owns almost every single insurance company you and I ever have to deal with, is based in Hartford, Connecticut. And it's a bunch of big money, fucking big wig business people who do not live in the city. They all live out outside the city and commute in. So on the weekends, it literally looks like a post-apocalyptic city. Like you can walk down a six lane highway, drag in a little tote bag and no one, there's not a car, there's not a human. It's pretty crazy. Um, but you will see piles of homeless people on walls because the homeless population is absolutely absurd and heartbreaking. And I told my friend Philip this, and he said, you're going to come work with me at the food kitchen tonight. Long story short, I ended up serving meals and cleaning up and stuff. I ended up sitting down and playing four hours of dominoes with a bunch of guys I could not communicate with any way, with in any way, shape, or form. But it was insanely formative to my becoming who I was because... I approach all of my life in the way of like, oh, you're scared of that, but you have, you've never experienced it. You have no idea why you're afraid of it. And it's a completely false fear that is just implanted in your head. This bucket the fuck up, Katie, we're going to do it now. And it's always turned out exactly the same. It's always just some fucking, like someone probably when I was a kid was like icky. And I went, okay, it's icky. And just the rest of my life trusted that. But there's so much of it that's total garbage, like utter fucking bullshit. And it was amazing. Like, 
I don't know. I can't. It was like I, molting, I guess, as a spider. Like I just relaxed and was like, there are people who are trying to be people. How dare I be afraid of a people? It was weird. It was a really, really weird. And I just, I'd never like spent any of my conscious adult years in a city or around a population of people that would have homeless population. We are seeing that, that dynamic more and more. New York City, San Francisco, et al. And what's our response? Ban panhandling, ban camping, and violently sweep homeless. Cheers to not that. Oh, yeah. I don't doubt shelters are a terrifying place. I mean, that's a lot. I, I don't imagine anyone goes to stay in a shelter unless they... That's a last-ditch effort. A last-ditch. You know? Oof. I'd be scared. Carrying around a vagina is a scary thing. Not saying carrying around a butthole and a penis isn't. But I only I can only speak to the vagina part and it scares me. Pixelated the homeless camps in Seattle are astronomically large. And if it is phenomenal, I mean, I, I don't know if I've told you this in a bit. So you might admit, I mean, every once in a while, I'm, we talk about the housing of Seattle simply because my sister went to school there. So I got to experience it via her. And at one point she was living in a black, full, black mold infested studio that was had a like a sliding shower door in the middle of the apartment to call it a two bedroom or something that um, drug dealers and people trying to break into an apartment would constantly be breaking into an apartment because it was like ground level. She was paying $1,800 a month for that. It was ridiculous. You had to like stand on the toilet to open the door of the bathroom, quote unquote, to get out the bathroom. It was so small. It was insane. And that was just so she could like get on a bus and take a bus to school and not bring a car to Seattle because the parking in Seattle would have been another 1800 a month or something crazy. Market rate, my dick fart. <coughs> Hi, Mandel. How are you, love? Wait, did you get a puppy? Oh my God, are they going to... Wait, give me that crapple. Don't you touch him. God damn it. Why are you like this? Give me that crapple. I would like to touch you. Thank you. What am I supposed to be doing? <gasps> the flying one. There it is. We knew it. <laughs> this one plumps up and slows down if it eats other bu bug snacks. Cute. Wiggle. Who doesn't, darling? This one plumps up and slows down if it eats. Was that a dick joke? It likes chocolate. Me too. You and me, bro. Um... I feel bad. Am I baiting it with a raspy? Sure am. This feels bad. <gasps> Did it. Gimme, 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 gimme. Fuck my ass. <gasps> Wait, no, I don't have that one yet. Tropica bug. Um, fucking dick fart. Suck my market rate, motherfuckers. Why do I have... Wait. Oh, can I get another? Wait, do I need another? Fuck, where's that wiggly bitch? Shitball fuck. Come here, ho. Speak to me! Um... She wanted an olive and I don't remember why. Did she? Why did I get this olive? You, it is you. Feed one. A grape mosquito, not an olive. My bad. Sue me. Oh my god, look at the ass on that bug. That's hilarious. Why did you spin? Shit fuck. When I went to the US on the way to the hotel, we encountered a homeless man that seemed to be yelling aggressively at the ground. There are, I mean, I don't know the exact percentages, but I would... I would dare to say the vast majority of homeless people are suffering mental illness. And that's why they're homeless. Because they 
have no way to ask for help because even people with insurance half the time don't even get care for that stuff. It's fucked up. It is so fucked up. Beyond. Shit, what do I make? I wish I hadn't have spun her. Can I go back? Yes. You creep me out. It's weird, right? Oh, I look fabulous. The colors are thirty-eight hundred Mandel. Holy shit! And fuck. now the ideas will flow. No. Mm -hmm, they gonna flow. Ooh, any second now. Come on now. Uh, I assure you. Uh, oh, who am I kidding? I have nothing. Random checks there without permission. Isn't a snack on this beach that can give me the inspiration that I need. Which is why you should that's look That's psychotic at shit. I need a look that pops. A look that's hot. No, pixelated. I totally got you. Darling, I got you. I would be so delighted if you could go to the scorched gorge and catch two. Hell, that objects. shit breaks my heart. That's just so it's so wrong fundamentally. <laughs> You're looking at 3K for an apartment for a halfway decent apartment, and don't get me started on pets. Oh, yeah. I mean, my sister got out of Seattle the moment she graduated. <laughs> she was like, as much as this city is fun, nothing is worth living in that. Two pop ticks? I don't think I've seen a pop tick yet. I don't know what that is. You're adorable. It would go a long way by, um, to the recovery. I, I mean, they've proven that regardless of your previous circumstances, giving someone a home greatly, I mean, exponentiates the rate of recovery in terms of mental illness or drug addiction and or so on and so forth. I mean, they've proven it time and time again via people independently, you know, doing charities that build and give people homes. Because, I mean... Who to thunk? Getting off heroin's a lot easier when you have a warm, safe place to sleep at night. I don't think you need any special education to see that one. I love the tiny home idea, or you know what I've seen as well. I believe it was done in Texas. Someone made an enormous 3D printer that can 3D print a house, a one bedroom house in like six hours. And it's, it's like on a spinning, like Lazy Susan. And it's like this giant arm that just goes, K -k 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 -k. I watched it. Google, like look it up on YouTube or something. It was really fucking cool to watch. The It's incredible how we can safely make a durable quality home for people that, you know, cannot, are, are in a state where they can't fucking buy. I mean, who the fuck can buy a house? I can't even, it's hard for me to define that because like, I'm not homeless and I don't consider myself in poverty, but I could not afford to buy a house right now. Is that a pop tick? Get out of here. What are you? No. Shit. Oh, it's a tropica bug. I forgot. My bad. Sorry, bro. Oh, what the fuck is that? No, what are you? A lovely sweet fly? Shut up. That's precious. I'm into it. Let's catch it. And Well, I don't think I have any backpack room. Hold up. Let's go maybe turn something in or something. I don't know. No, I don't think I ever will be able to afford a house in order to have enough, like in order to save up enough for an, a down payment that makes it. So I'm not just paying double the actual cost of the house just to get a bank loan. Who can do that? Like who makes, I, I don't know. Not me. Look what the snack dragged in. Oh, I wouldn't have come back. Oh, a hundred percent. Kel. were here. But Let only if it's oh, no. if it's still okay. Like, there's a lot now. of shitty-ass, broken-down oh, yeah? buildings. They're like, me, oh, yeah, we'll turn that me. into housing. And it's like, then I reckon we're neighbors if there's not running water, it doesn't count. Howdy, neighbor. I got my eye on you, Wambus Trouble Ham. You better Kel, are you kidding me? That's fucked. Your snacks. Seems like they're getting away from you. Oh, Charlie, where'd you run Same pixelated. To? At this point, my best-case scenario is I want to invest in a small chunk of property out in the middle of nowhere that nobody wants. And I'm gonna like build myself a tree house via YouTube tutorial. And that will be where I die, I guess. Cause I don't know what else to do, you know? Oh, I can donate my critters. That's what I want to do. 
Um, I don't need my crapple for a mission. I don't need the strabby. I don't... I don't think I need those. I want to give the weenie bug to that fucking purple valley bitch. She wants to fuck it. Well, Pixley, that's the thing. Like, if I had my nice ch chunk of, like, little, little... I'm not talking acres. Just little chunk of land out in the woods where there's no people and no cars. My dogs would love to be outside 24-7. They are built for it, and they would adore it. The only reason I don't let them do it here is I'm terrified they're going to get into the street and get hit by a car. It scares me so much. It just, like, haunts me, as I'm sure it would any of you. Like, we live on an intersection where people, it's only a two-way stop sign, and the other way, people just fucking blast through. Even though it's, like, anything less, like, anything less high than my Jeep will bottom out, they do it anyways. It scares the shit out of me, man. And I love my poods, but they are dumb. <laughs> yep I mean I'd love to do just something I can make because I'm never gonna be able to pay builders I'm it's gonna have to be me that makes it if I ever want anything like that I want you know not just be stuck with renter fever the rest of my life them the market solves problems via supply and demand reality people are fucked and priced out of housing word How humanity is oh he's precious is fucked would you like an interview? Well, I've uh, never done an interview before. Um, how's it work? Mm-hmm. That's ours, too. And it's kind of a weird blind through way. So you have to... We kind of have to creep out. Because you can just... Woo, they just fly through. It's crazy. And it drives me nuts. And I've seen my dogs jump higher than my face. I know they can get over my fence if they want to. And it scares me so much. But they love to be outside. It's crazy. And I love that. I mean, I want them to be my trail dogs, which they are quite well. Who are you? Uh, Gramble Giggle Where are we? Oh, my I God. Is this a rape barn? Bug snacks in town and make sure they don't wander off. I've made it a life goal to destroy the market as a force of nature dogma. Word. I will join you. I'll just mimic you. You're smarter than me. I made a playlist for hiking. It has music from the Peanuts, the Cranberries, and Eminem. It's a trail mix. Oh my fucking fuck. Well done. And you're sick. How does it feel to still be better than most of us with COVID? <laughs> There's a, That's how ours is too. It's like the two roads that come into the intersection kind of come down like this. And then the... The middle square is like a hump. And they just kunk 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 through it going 35. Which is pretty fast when there's children walking around and I'm one block from an elementary school. Not one block. I'm some blocks. Walkable distance. <gasps> Kel, isn't it super fun? I'm so glad. Did I tell you I was offered a sponsorship while I was in London? This is nothing. Normally I'm sick and twisted. This is just one of them. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Why come to Snack Tooth Island? I heard Lizbert was gathering up some grumps to be part of her new family. And I thought I could really use one of those. You don't have a family. I did. Are you a stuffed anyway, animal? Uh, can we talk about something else? Did you kill your family? Thoughts on bug snacks? Well, they're just the cutest little things, aren't they? I don't understand how anybody could look into their googly little eyes and want to eat them. But everybody does eat bug snacks. Uh, um, well, they don't eat none of mine, and that's what counts. Oh my god, pixelated. Story of my life. That's me, like, if I want to do anything before 10 a.m. and I can't find something and I know Zach knows where it is, I just have to sit around and wait for him to wake up, and it drives me nuts. But I respect it. Why did you leave town? Did you kill your parents? Well, to bring in snacks, everybody got mighty hungry. They done treated my barn like a grocery store. I held them off for a while, but I should have known <laughs> this never quits. You know what? Everybody has hobbies. Don't judge. What did Wombus do? Those angry <sighs> eyes scare I me. I woke up to him throwing my snacks into a sack. I panicked, and I let the rest go free. Broke my heart, but it's better than them getting eaten. I left that night for the beach and started rebuilding my family. Do you think he has sex with them? 
Are your bug snacks safe from Wiggle? Maybe. Wiggle's a lot, but she's got a good heart. If she really likes me, she'll learn to love bug snacks the way I do. To be fair. Any info on Lisbeth? Lisbeth? She'd bring me lots of new friends to take care of. Sometimes we'd work together training my little ones. Sometimes she'd ask for one and I'd have to <gasps> say goodbye. I'm not even fucking with you, Trof. Last night, I was making a grocery list and I thought about ordering blueberries to make blueberry muffins. Get out. Now I have to. Aw, oh, pixelated. I don't know. What's that like? Because I only know the being asked to reach all the tall shelves side. <laughs> Do you have I a like stool? I they're all like Sprout, <laughs> helping out like little sidekicks. But sometimes she didn't get enough on the hunt. I love a blueberry muffin, man. Shit's fucking right delicious there. with like a sugar crumble on top. Mm -mm -mm. Talk about something else. I have no judgment. I'm absolutely curious. I don't remember consciously being short. I grew tall. I was... Like, if I had my elementary school, you know, class pictures, I'm that pyramid child in the very back row in the middle. I was six foot by the time I was in sixth grade. At least. I think if I was fifth grade, I was about six foot already. I've always been a monster, so I have no idea. The coffee crumble top? Fuck yes. With butter? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the one I was referencing. Just, I don't know the names. I'm, not, I'm new to the cook baking world. Really, Kel? I've had some luck here. I can't remember where I got him, though. I think it was Safeway. Me too. My little sister is a fucking incredible baker. She bakes with her eyes closed. I don't really... Eating's more of a chore, so I don't really prioritize cooking or anything, and I know that's really not bad, so I've been trying this year a lot. And I'm learning. I've, I love watching cooking shows, and I love watching travel eating shows. So I have, like, this strangely bizarre, like, Trivial Pursuit-style bank of knowledge in my head about food and cooking. Like, I know all these really stupid facts I'll whip out, and people are like, you don't cook? And I'm like, yeah, but Anthony Bourdain said that in episode five, season three. So. Do it. I'm usually right. Steven, you're not wrong. <laughs> I've never made an edible. Is that weird? Maybe I should. I'm between 5'11 and 6 foot, depending on which police line up I'm in. It's beautiful. 5'4, I think, is pretty average, to be honest. Trof, there's very there are a few people. BDO is also very much taller than me. BDO is like. I want to say 6'4. I always fuck it up. He's probably taller. 6'6. Six, six. I don't know. They're huge. Lima is taller than me, allegedly. But I mean. If I'm in a crowd, like, say, at a theme park somewhere in America, I'm taller than 99% of the people there, I guarantee. I'm at least a head taller. It's like an ocean of just, like, and I just watch it. Count the downdrift. It is. Over 6'2 is a fucking alien. Over 6 foot, it's, like, it's a defined tribe, you know, that we've all kind of acknowledged, but don't really like they're kind of snobs over six two it's like look at that species go elegance you know <laughs> same steven you know i've never dated anyone significantly taller than me in my entire life it's either same height or shorter ever and that's not for lack of trying let me tell you but i find that tall people love a little person to sit and spin and it's just not fair Mosh pits are extremely safe. Oh, man. I, adv I highly advise everybody not be afraid of mosh pits. No, nah, I've been in them. Sales. I completely agree. I've been in a mosh pit on purpose, and I've been, like, knocked into one on accident. And when I was knocked in on accident, I swear five sweaty shirtless men lifted me above them and said, are you okay? And, like, Carrie helped me out of the crowd and made sure I was okay, apologized a million times, like... That ain't happening at a country concert. Just going to throw that out there. No one in the mosh pit wants to mosh with someone who doesn't want to be in the mosh pit. 
it's one of those like silent agreements, you know? I've, I've, I've never felt unsafe going to a metal concert ever in my life. Gentlemen who just have a lot of theory inside, that's who goes there, and then me, and others like me, you know what I'm saying? Someone falls, you pick them up. Someone goes to crowd surfs, you carry them, get them to security, make sure they're okay, 100%. I mean, it's literally like, I have I would say of all the concerts I've ever experienced, metal concerts, as a very general term, have the least amount of security because they don't need it. The fans are security. We are so fucking like fiery passionate about maintaining our, our integrity of being good people like enough people have gone after the metal head for being a whatever a murderer or so on and so forth there's a fucking fruit fly you know what i mean that we're like absolutely fucking fruitly not that is not who any of us are and never have been never will be so go fuck yourself you know i've seen it i've only one time let me think oh my fuck snacks we gotta finish this interview with cutesies Sometimes I wake up at night and I'm out of bed, lost in the woods. I think I see Lizbert out there <coughs> watching me like a I haven't been to the Bahamas yet. Did you like spirit. it? Uh, can, can we talk about something else? I think he killed someone. The only safe space you have is the one you make in your mind, and you always need to be aware of your environment. Because as Conan teaches us, no one in this life can, can you trust. Not men, not beasts. Word. I mean, it's it's honestly just like using common sense everywhere you go has served me quite well. I've never been pickpocketed or anything. Mugged, knock on wood. But I'm not challenging, you know, <laughs> shit like walking down dark alleys at 2 a.m. by myself acting drunk. I'm not going to do that to prove a point anywhere. But I don't think anyone should anywhere. The less prey, the less fucking predators. You know what I'm saying? But Katie, I can't go outside at all here. Wait, I can you can, and there's pretty shit to look at. You can't even lie to me. I've been there. Oh, I don't think I like interviews very much. Here, Lisbert dropped this in my barn back when. I never got Was it nice? Giving it back. I've heard good things. I don't know what it's for, but you can have it if you promise never to interview me again. That and like a predator, whether they be sexual or a fucking lion in the in the jungles or in the savannas of Africa or whatever. They, mm, they will not stay in a place where there's no food. So if we stop providing food, i.e., you know, being stupid. I'm not saying you were wearing the wrong thing. Like, I could be naked at any time. I have the right to take my titties out. There's a fly that's haunting me. Um, but nobody is, is smart walking down dark, unlit alleys at 2 a.m. acting like a drunk and passing out in an alley. Like, that is not a good idea for anybody. It invites ugly behavior. Accountability buddy system. If you don't know what that is, an accountability buddy is someone who, no matter what, they will ensure you are home at the end of the night. And it's just a way of, like, when I was younger, we would go out in big groups of people from college and shit like that. And instead of worrying about all 10 of your girlfriends going out and splitting up at the bar... At the beginning of the night, you'd be like, 